We are in Brazil, the fifth biggest country in the world. We've spent the last week in Rio de Janeiro, but today we are driving to Ilha Grande, where we have two nights. Ilha Grande means big island, and well, it's a pretty big island, but not just any island. This is a true Amazonian jungle with some of the rarest and most endangered species in the world. All year round, people come to the island to enjoy its insane beauty, tasty food, colorful caipirinhas, and what has got to be the definition of ultimate relaxation. Our travel companions Andrea and Giovanni have talked about this place for the last six months. So now it's time to finally see if they were right all along. Is the island as good as they say? Are the food and drinks fantastic? And what about the beaches? Is Ilha Grande really nothing less than pure happiness? To ensure a good start to the trip, we naturally had to quality assure the local beers. Not bad. In the quirky village of Concisao de Jacaray, we bought four one-way tickets to Abrao, each for 100 reais, and that was fairly expensive since we later found out that you can actually hire a private boat for around 500. Anyway, it didn't really matter since the trip took less than 30 minutes. It was a smooth ride and the mood was high, mainly due to the beautiful weather. Okay, not really, but we honestly couldn't wait to explore the island. We were super excited. What's up, my boys? Welcome to Ilha Grande. We finally made it to the most tropical island in the world. Well, at well, least maybe. the most tropical island we have ever been to, for sure. You guys know we're on a big Brazil trip, and this right here is the highlight. Well, the, we the don't part know. Of, it's the part of it that we've been looking forward to the most. Because on this island, you can't enter by car or by airplane. And there are no cars driving around here either. No. So this is civilization circa 300 years ago. You get here by a big boat, and then once you are uh, left on the pier, the taxi boat from the hotel are picking you up. This of course depends on where you stay, but getting around is almost always by taxi boat. We decided to book a hotel close to Abrao, which is the main town of Ilha Grande. That way we have plenty of options, food and drinks wise. So we are doing a six, seven minute little boat ride to the final destination, which is our hotel, Asalem. This is where we live, is that the ball? Wow, wow. <laughs> I don't want to leave this place and I already haven't set my foot on it. Este é o paraíso autêntico? Oh wow. <laughs> nice now. This looks incredible. Especially because we have the honeymoon suite. Uh well, maybe your relationship needed more. Excited to finally be at the hotel, we immediately checked into our rooms. Hotel SLM is not a cheap place. In fact, we paid 1300 reais per night, which is much more expensive than your average place here. Most people stay at the so-called Pusadas, where you get a basic but clean room with the essential amenities. Rooms can be as little as 160 reais per night, almost 10 times cheaper than our hotel, so you can really make your Ilha Grande trip cheap. Anyway, we chose the expensive solution because of the photos and reviews, but soon we realized that price didn't exactly correlate with the value. Sure, it was a nice hotel, but the room was very basic with a cold feel. It didn't exactly ooze of warm jungle vibes, and the attention to detail was underwhelming. The safe didn't seem very safe, and somehow there were two AC units installed, but only one of them worked. On the upside, the minibar was packed with all the good stuff, the bed was comfy enough, and we had no problem figuring out how to get cold or warm water in the shower. Overall, we did like the hotel, but mostly because of the common areas, service and location. Especially the location of Hotel SLM was terrific, since we could either take a short boat ride or a 15 minute jungle walk. And with our adventurous spirits, we naturally chose the Indiana Jones route. Uh, what? There's 
we have to go through the water to uh -huh. get to the... Indeed. It's high tide, much. <laughs> a little bit of electricity here, guys. If you aren't awake. Right around our ears right now, there are tons of, of some of the most poisonous snakes in the you world. You do. You do have a lot of them here. Actually, the neighboring island, but you don't visit it as, an, as a normal tourist, has the highest concentration of poisonous snakes in the world. Do you remember when we went to Kusamui and we took a little boat to a desert island, we thought, and there was a little hotel on it, and we said, this is what we want to try to do in the future. Now we're doing it. We are now going to the main city, city village, town. Uh, it's called Abrao. It has uh, 1,900 inhabitants. So it's actually not tiny, tiny. And it does have two cars, one ambulance and one garbage truck. Okay, we're not alone here. Our first impressions of Ilya Granji were positive. We already loved it here. Having no cars and roads truly added to the castaway island feeling that Jon and I love so much. We were pretty impressed with how developed this part of the island is in terms of the selection of restaurants and places to stay. But it didn't take away from the island feeling. Somehow we felt unusually free here. It really was paradise. <laughs> You've been here so many times, 20 times uh -huh. and five times. Uh -huh. What makes this place so special beyond the obvious? Um, you're on a small tropical island paradise. You don't have any roads, you just walk around. You have Brazilian music playing. People are very friendly. You have nice food, good drinks, just paradise. We even have amazing weather. Well, maybe not. Quick little note to the food here. It is amazing. Yeah. Of course, they had picanha on the menu, so we had to pick it. But usually I don't expect much of food when you're on islands, especially not small islands like this. Very much pleasantly surprised. Would you guys say that this is for the middle class or for the more wealthy Brazilian people to come here? Middle class. Middle. Middle Actually, class. the wealthy, they come maybe to Ilha Grande, but not often. They stay at a coastal area where they have their private condominiums with big uh, villas, yachts and that kind of life. So it's not it's not considered expensive to go to uh, Ilha Grande. No. So after a tasty Caipirinha fuel lunch, an eternal rain shower put our village exploration to a halt. We only made it a hundred meters further up the beach before we had to seek shelter. So far, unfortunately, our Brazil trip had been consistently affected by insane amounts of rain. But normally, you wouldn't worry about the weather when going to Ilha Grande. Luckily, the rain didn't really matter since we had wonderful live music and new friends already. You have to smile, Giovanni. Smile. The weather forecast says full rain both days. I'll check back with you later. It is beautiful. I, I did a uh, Volta Ilha, the whole travel to the island. I made it in the uh, raining time. It was quite beautiful. So of course we had hoped for good weather on this trip, but our new friend Villian assured us that Ilha Grande is just as amazing when it rains. Oh, happy day! Oh, happy day! What is this? Pastel uh, casual. Is it good? It's very cheesy. As the rain kept pouring, we kept drinking. And before we knew it, it was dark. Dark and drunk. Woo! <laughs> 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 
This is what you do on Ile Granji when the weather is terrible. It's still raining. It's raining six, seven hours in. How long has it been raining? I don't know, but you're happy, right? Yeah. Who cares? Look, I mean, that's Brazil. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. There. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. To a Before ruining the rest of our Ilha Grande trip with a heavy hangover, we decided to quit while ahead. I'm not sure if all hotels have evening taxi service, but we were more than happy with that since walking back in pitch dark, super drunk, seemed irresponsible. Now it was time for a good night's sleep and hopefully a new day filled with sun and blue skies. There you are, my friends. How did you sleep? Um, I slept. Thank you. You slept? Like a baby. But like a baby. With a massive headache. We're a little hungover today. But even though it's raining and the weather isn't like as we expected, it is amazing to wake up to this breakfast and consuming it with this view. Uh, it should dry up within the next uh, hour or two. So maybe we can go out and explore a little bit more than the selection of caipirinhas and beers here. Oh, such great hiking shoes! Hola! Who's a good boy? Breakfast Corona. Why not? It finally cleared up, so we are out of the gates. Now we're going on a little hike to... Uh, where are we going, Giovanni? Another beach. Another beach? In the jungle this time. Okay. And is this to mainly check out uh, if the caipirinhas are different? Uh, partly. I don't think people really walk here much. So this is an excellent place to meet some of the most venomous snakes in the world. Here on the island there are no hospitals, so if you get bitten by a snake, you most likely will die. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. Is this the end? Well, I mean, I think this is continuation of the road. But plans start to take over already, so... Okay. Unfortunately, our tour guides didn't know what they were doing. Excuse me, Mr. 20 times here on... Uh... I love new discoveries, so that's what we are doing today, right? Too much appreciation for me and Jon, we had to abort the snake walk adventure. Instead, we decided to go on a boat adventure. Uh, okay. What's your What's your name? Hikinho. 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 What a delicious boat we are on, huh? This was what we were looking forward to the most. And the best thing? It wasn't even raining. Well, at least not the first three minutes of the trip. Luckily, we were able to escape the rain by riding like the wind. So I ride like the wind. And suddenly we were met with pristine beauty and a sense of calmness that was hard to beat. We're gonna buy this house. Yeah, and it almost looks like it looks a Portuguese, like a Portuguese, yeah. Portuguese it house. It looks like an El Intesio inspired house yeah. with the blue around. Already we had a greater understanding of the scale of Ilha Granji. This really is a big island, but also incredibly beautiful. We could only imagine the beauty when soaked in rays of sun. Anyway, it was time to swim. Swim in food. We saw a restaurant from afar and decided to go. The place was called Le Isle Restaurant and we were hungry for fish and caipirinhas. Caipirinha, caipirinha, caipirinha. The cool thing is that you just take the boat wherever you want to go and then you have restaurants just spread out all around uh, the island. So you can't really just walk to, to uh, the restaurant you want to go to. You need a boat. I gotta say, the caipirinha here is um, top three so far. Oh, what do we have here? A dish that you have to try when you are in Brazil is moqueca. Moqueca comes in many different varieties. Today I'm having one that is made from fish. It's super saucy. 
it's super delicious and it's very it's a fresh dish to get normally they will buy fresh fish and use it from with all the local uh, vegetables like onion pepper capsicum and then they will let it simmer for some time until the fish gets all smooth and delicious and it's probably one of my favorite things that I've had in Brazil so far. With our tummies full of fish and caipirinhas, we set sail towards the very north of Ilha Grande. Are you kidding me? Wow. Oh my goodness. Uh, Amelia, yes. they have a yacht party. We're joining it now. That would be cool, huh? Can we drink with you? <laughs> Sam Savashas! Oh! Oh! Amiguinho! Where are you from? Dinamarca! Dinamarca! Ah, Dinamarca! 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 Take your hand! Jack, come back! <laughs> so, what I joked about three minutes earlier was now reality. We were suddenly treated with picanha and drinks on two yachts tied together. Giovanni and Andrea, they have brought us to so many picanha places by now. But I gotta say, the best picanha I've had on this trip is right here on this plate. Very good, right? Brazil is okay. It's acceptable, to... right? <laughs> we couldn't believe how nice these people were inviting complete strangers on board. This is definitely one of the things we have been enjoying the most here in Brazil. The people are so extremely friendly and outgoing. They want to try cachaça. Oh, cachaça. Cachaça. Oh, my God. Oh. I'm popping my cherry right now. My ca cachada, cachada, cherry. Cachaça. Cachaça. It's a little bit stronger than mineral water. This is what you get really, really drunk from. So normally they say, be careful what you wish for, but I wish for friends with a yacht. Now we have two of them. We spent around one hour on the boat having so much fun. But unfortunately, we had to go home as the dark was approaching. Até logo! Are you sad? You look like you're sad. This is the after party on a state classy boat. Going back home to Amrao. This is how my life should not look like. When we finally got back to our hotel, we had a minor hiccup. Hikinio wanted 1200 reais, even though we had agreed on 800. He claimed we had been away for too long, but we never really agreed on a fixed amount of time sailing. So it was a bit sneaky of him. Anyway, I guess it was fair, but keep this in mind if you rent a boat yourself. Can we high five on a very uh, special experience? High five! That was special. As if we didn't have enough drinks, the Caipirinha spree continued. With the mood high and all of us soaked in booze, we headed out for our last night on this beautiful island. We left the big camera at home as we wanted to relax 100%. We loved Ilia Granji so much that leaving already seemed unbearable. We had an amazing last night, but the following morning was a different story. Apparently Giovanni and Andrea were born with superpowers, so they insisted to leave the hotel already at 9 to go on a small jungle hike. I hate you. Good morning. However, the truth was that we were about to cross half the island. Literally. It's very pretty. We're actually pretty high up. I, I hate mean, our friends. What, what, what do they, don't, they don't know us? They, maybe they think you had a little too much of the good life. Now you need to lose some. Burn some calories, you know? So far I've burned around three caipirinhas. Giovanni kept talking about this beach called Lopez Mendez with crystal white sand. You know, the kind of sand that squeaks. I specifically said no jungle hiking more than 15 minutes. I know, but I also specifically said not being drunk every single day. Although it was beyond our idea of healthy exercise, it did feel amazing to consume half a coconut tree on the halfway point. And this was also where we finally got our Ilia Granji highlight. For the first time, we saw sun and blue skies. <laughs> oh, Amelia! Sun is here. Sun is here. And the color of this water is finally being illuminated, you know? The last week, we haven't seen the sun. Now she's here, baby. Finally. Check completed. And we are 
I'm surrounded by huge birds. What is it? Is it eagles or what is it? I think it's vultures. Okay, that is the biggest bamboos I have ever seen. Wow. One of my childhood dreams was always to build my own little bamboo house in the middle of the jungle. <laughs> Whoa. Hey. We had conquered the jungle and made it to the final destination, Lopez Mendes. A white silica beach well worth the hangover ridden jungle journey. The epic thing about Brazil is that no matter how much in the middle of nowhere you are, there's always someone selling beers. We spent a few hours on the beach before accepting the fact that we had to leave paradise. Ilha Grande already had a special place in our heart. Amelia and I rarely have problems leaving places behind, as we always look forward to what's next. But in the case of Ilha Grande, we felt sad. Even with the constant rain showers, we absolutely loved our stay. Two days was nowhere near enough, and we had still not seen half of the island. We even missed the iconic coconut tree. Luckily, there's always an airplane waiting to take off. So what is the verdict? Well, the food and drinks were in fact fantastic. The beaches are also amazing, but some sun is recommended for that. The main takeaway, however, is that Ilha Grande is pure happiness. We are coming back and next time it will be at least a week. We are on our way back to the hotel to check out and go back to the mainland because we are going to Parachi! It was too short. We'll be coming back soon. Obrigada, Roberto, Miguel. See you in Parache. If we make this alive.